Get ready for the most interesting interview with Adam Rose ever. What's up, everybody? It's Grim, and I'm bringing to you something so exclusive, something that's just going to blow your minds right now. I got to sit down with Adam Rose and talk to him for a good 15 minutes about the kind of stuff that most other people don't talk to WWE superstars about, and I can't wait to share this with you guys because it's seriously like a backstage peek into what's Triple H like, what's Vince McMahon like, what went wrong in your career, what went right, why are you gone, when are you coming back, and all kinds of other interesting stuff. I can't wait for you guys to see this. Please check it out and let me know what you think of this interview in the comments below. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? It's Grim, and today I am joined by former WWE superstar Adam Rose, now known as Aldo Rose. No, still Adam Rose. Still Adam Rose. He's still Adam Rose. <laughs> now, I seen something, and forgive me, my mind completely lost it. But like, you had the Rosebuds, but then you changed their name to something else. It was like Thorn Bushes, or what was that? I don't remember changing the name. <laughs> they're no, still the rosebuds too. They're always rosebuds. Okay, awesome. Always. And are you still bringing back the rosebuds, or have we moved away from that? Because some days it seems yes, some days it seems no. They will always be around. They're like they're like a disease that doesn't go away. <laughs> kind of like herpes. Yes. So the rosebuds are herpes. I Pretty like much. Them. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't go away. No matter what you do, they're always there. <laughs> That's great. Mm. Um, now, obviously, you've been out of WWE for a little bit, but you know. I don't want the party to end. I want you back. Right. What are the odds? There's good possibility odds. As you can see, as right now the party is like really <laughs> rocky. You know? yeah. Right now it's rocky. I think it's not party time all the time anymore. It's not party time some of the time. Okay. But some of the time might be sooner than later. That's because now if you if you remember, Kurt Hawkins. Yes. He left WWE. Right, and he did a lot of shows with me, whatever, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he's back in WWE. Exactly. And I was like, wait a minute, hmm, how did, I wonder... Midas Touch. Yeah, I wonder if, you know, we were supposed to have a big match, and then all of a sudden he was gone. Like, did they do that on purpose? Did they take him away from me? That's exactly what I think. I think they thought you were a competition. Really? Yes. That's crazy. They thought you were some major competitor, so they, they <laughs> shut it down before that match could happen. Damn it! I knew it's it. unlucky. <laughs> so, when you were in the WWE, I don't want to get into anything that's too heavy or too out of control. I want to know, like, when you're in the locker room, mm -hmm. like, who smells bad? Who doesn't wash their gear? Like, who are you just... Let me think. I think it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a communal thing eventually. Like, if you've been on the road for a week, within about a week, right? everyone doesn't smell good. <laughs> By that point, everyone's gear is throwing it on smells <laughs> But, and there's just no access yes, to it. No, there is, but gear after a while, no matter what you do to it, after about a week, it's 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 it's, it's, gonna, gonna, it, it's gonna stink. <laughs> so there's that, and rosebuds stink generally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they would always grab a, a couple of people have done this show mm -hmm. have been rosebuds. Yeah, and it, it just seems like you know they go to a town and they grab a couple local indies and whatever. And is it do you have to go over with them, or you just go out there and act crazy? Or is there something like you have to tell that? that? Let's do that again. What was that? Ooh, I'm a rosebud. <laughs> do that again. <laughs> so many times you'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. As long as you ask, I'll do it. <laughs> perfect rosebud. No, I mean, some of the times it was extras, and some, most of the times it was just um, local indie workers. That uh, was something for them to do, and then, you know, and God bless them for doing it. But, um, some of the times we had like we had like professional rosebuds too, guys that were masters at being rosebudding, you know. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot of former, uh, well, they're they're current WWE stars now, and they were NXT guys yes. at the time, or even before that, we've seen Becky Lynch in there, yes. Braun Strowman. Yes. Like, see, a, a lot of times in wrestling, I feel like you know, like Neville. Yeah. Fair, apparently, he walked out of WWE because he's mad that he had to lose to Enzo. But I'm like, Braun Strowman was a rosebud, and he had a smile on his face. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like, I mean, he's seven foot tall. I'm a monster. I'm brawn. But he would go out there and <laughs> look up real But That's the thing. You've got to give brawn credit. He would do whatever. you do whatever. Do. you do and whatever. Do and not only would he do it, he would do it well. And he would do it to beyond what they asked him to do. Because, I mean, at one point, he became my general rosebud. He would <laughs> literally control all the other rosebuds. 
just to make sure they didn't get out of control. And, you, and look at the big stories today. So right. you got to know, like, there's a guy who will do whatever you tell him to do, and will do it to the best of his ability. Right. So if you tell him to go out there and yeah. be a rosebud, he he's like, it serious. He's having a good old time right. with it. So I love him. That's that's what I always say. When you're in this business and you're doing shows, and yeah. you know you're you know obviously you're at the will of the promoter. You do what they ask you to do, and you do it to the best of your ability. Exactly. They say, go out there and be a loser and be a jobber. I'm going to go be the best damn jobber they ever That's saw. exactly what it is. And then, <laughs> then, you know, when you're still earning six figures for 10 years doing that, you know, <laughs> someone's doing something right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's My whole thing is, is I always want to say, go out there, do the best you can with what they give you. That's the truth. And, and th you know, I'll say, hey, look, you know, I gave that guy trash, and he made it awesome. Now I'm going to respect him. I'll give him something better. Exactly. But if I give the guy trash and he stomps around and does it lousy, I'm going to be like, this guy's got a bad attitude. Yeah. Now I'm not going to give him anything. So that's like a real thing in WWE. Yeah, too. William, William Regal says it a lot too. No matter, and he's an example of it. Someone that no matter what they gave him, he always ran with it to his fullest abilities and never ever... I mean, sometimes he'll say no to maybe something being dangerous or whatever, but never ever said no to anything without trying it at least, and without doing it to the best of its maximum abilities. Right, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Now, as far as politicking in WWE, is there, you know, the guy that's constantly running to Vince McMahon or constantly running to creative and saying, oh, hey, you know, you should put me over for that belt. You should put me over for that match. You know, I should be in that Survivor Series match. I should be in the final four at the Royal Rumble. And the guy, bangs on the wall enough that they start being like, yeah, 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 sure, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's a good idea, and they start listening to his ideas, and the next thing you know, the guy's practically booking himself. Like, does that happen, or do they not just that, tell you to get lost? Not that I know of. Good, good luck trying it that way. <laughs> I mean, I think um, there's a difference between politicking and being proactive on your own career, so I think that's different. I think if someone's sitting in the locker room just expecting things to happen, then, then that's not being proactive. Okay. So there's a difference between politics and being proactive. I think everyone should be proactive, but it's like, I mean, I don't think that's the way things happen. That's not the way I saw things happen. Anyway. That makes sense. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you see it on the independent shows where, you know, guys are constantly up the promoter's ass, you know, changing the finish, changing the match order, you know, to try to put themselves over. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't know how far guys get with that in well, the WWE. You could, you could do that as much as you want if you haven't got what they're looking for to, to back up whatever you think you're worth and then that ain't happening. Right. You know, you're not going to get that spot no matter how many times you go knocking on the door. It's not <laughs> happening. Have, have you, like, are you really cool with McMahon? Like, you not really talk to him at all? I had a, um, I spoke to him quite a bit, but the funny thing was the first time I ever met him, I was scared to death of him. I remember I didn't even want to bump into him. So I remember I was with, it was still, I'd just gone up with NXT and I was walking through the hallways with about three other NXT guys. And yeah, you see McMahon coming. And I literally made a U-turn and just looked <laughs> and the boys had to actually grabbed me and pulled me back and say, stop it, you can meet McMahon, it's not a big deal. And, I, and the funny thing is when I did speak to him and sit in the office with him and discuss things with him, I found him very like receptive and, and open and just down to earth, nothing like you would have expected. That's really cool. I got to meet him, yeah. just as a fan, yeah. outside of a match. Yeah. And he was really cool. He invited me and my family to come sit with him and eat. Yeah. And I thought that was amazing. Like, I mean, here I am, a 14-year-old kid, scared to, yeah. hi, Mr. McMahon, how are you? And he's like, hey, how you doing? Are you here to watch the match? Yeah. You know, me and Brett, we're going, Brett Hart, mm -hmm. me and Brett, we're going to eat. You guys want to come in and join us? And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's not like we sat with them, but we sat next to them yeah. at the table. And it was exactly. really, really cool. I think like what people expect. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about Triple H? Because you... Know. I had a much closer relationship with Triple H just coming through NXT and him being so involved in NXT. There's a much closer relationship with regards to who I was and character wise and all that. Okay. And once again, the cool thing about Triple H, I always felt, is he never, um, he never blew, he, everything was very real and everything was very um, honest. Okay. He never blew smoke up my ass at any point. It was, it was real honest about what was happening. Okay. And like when things were going right, he was honest about that. When things were going wrong, he was honest about that. And, you, uh, I felt him extremely honest, which I, you need in the business. <laughs> right. You don't think they are going to be, but he was always yes. extremely so, honest. So is there a time... And fair with me, I felt, too. Is there a time that you went out there and did a match and thought everything went great, and then you walked in the back and, well, you know, uh, that was trash. I don't, you... I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think anything ever went really great. I think, when, I'm just going to be honest, when we were up there, I think everything was always just slightly off and 
not really knowing where it was going and what. It, so I don't think we ever had a moment of like, okay, that went great. I think in London, just the response was like, okay, that was great, you know. But I think that we never had those matches up there. I think in NXT, I had more experiences like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I felt like when you were in NXT, you were gonna be like the next big thing. Yeah. And then when they brought you up to WWE, it just didn't seem. Right. It wasn't the same. Yeah. It just and wasn't the same. And that's going to happen with so many different things because there's so many factors involved that you cannot guarantee it's going to come across the same. You just cannot. Right. Something that came across well in that environment didn't necessarily come across well in this environment. And it wasn't produced exactly the same way. So there was many different dynamics involved that just did not produce exactly the same element. Then there was a totally different direction of thought with it too at one point. Right. So and then that point kept on changing. So you you just didn't know eventually. Yeah. Was did did anyone ever just come to you and be like, all right, look, we're gonna scrap this whole party thing. No. We're gonna make you Leo Kruger, and you're gonna no. be a murder no. killer. No, never yeah. happened. Never. And I, funnily enough, it took me a while to come to because I always thought oh, Leo Kruger was a much better gimmick, and if I had that, I would have done so much better. But I, I, now that I've looked back at it and I can look back with a different perspective, I could see why. Okay. Everything makes sense to me now as to why Leo wasn't there. Everything makes sense to me now. I yeah. don't, I don't. Hindsight's always hindsight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to pull off Leo Kruger. Leo Kruger was Braun Strowman. He was like six foot seven guy, 300, you know, that's what he should have been. Right. It should not have been me. It was just, there was this massive detachment between me and that character. Okay. And I couldn't see it while I was doing it. But now looking back, I could see I was far more Adam Rose than I was that. Yeah. You know? If there's, this will be the final thing. If there yeah. was one thing, looking back in your career path in WWE that you could have changed, and say, you know what, had I done this, I think things would have turned out a lot different. Yeah. What would be that one thing? There's something that always peeved me from the beginning. <laughs> and it's such a small little thing, but it really bothered me, and I felt it would have made a massive difference. On the entrance, if we just dropped the lights. Yes. We needed to drop the lights. I felt, I felt, yeah, honestly. If it was too bright, it killed that entrance, it killed that, that, that yeah. lights needed to be cut, needed to go to like that nightclub environment. Right. That would have made a huge difference. I thought that was like, on the main roster, they put this extra little tang in the beginning of your theme music. Mm -hmm. It didn't really get into it yet. Like you said, the light should have dropped, and then immediately should have turned into a nightclub. The tang was fine as long as the lights had dropped in. Yeah. But you could see the build, and the lights never dropped. Right. So now... And the people aren't into it. Yeah, it's, just, it's a totally different feel. It didn't have that edgy... Because in, I felt the NXT it had sort of still had an edgy little vibe to it. Right. And once it went there, it was too Sesame Street. Yeah. You know, and then that became the problem. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. How was that? I thought that was pretty interesting. I mean, Adam Rose gives a lot of awesome insight into a lot of the backstage things that go on in WWE that you guys might not know about, might not think about, and I hope you guys learned something here from Adam Rose. Really, really, really insightful interview, and I just want to thank Adam for coming on the show and doing it with us, and this was perfect day to upload it because my voice is trash. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Tap that little bell on the YouTube app so you never miss the notifications when we upload a video. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it. Yeah.